Nigerian equities market is gearing up for the closing gong. Let's join Temple Ashaju now on the Nigerian Stock Exchange for updates on today's trading. Good afternoon, Temple. So bring us up to speed with today's trading activities. Good afternoon. Well, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, we know that the market has been deep in since it's opened all day. We're down some 0.46% as we speak. We've seen the losses uh, cutting across all the sectors that we have in the market, except for the oil and gas, which uh, recently just made a turnaround. Rather, the industrial goods segment, we just uh, had a turnaround, and it's currently the only segment of the market uh, up some 0.16% now. But if you look at the banking names, the oil and gas, the consumer goods, they're all in the red territory, uh, negative territory precisely. Uh, we've seen uh, Diamond Bank as the most actively traded as we speak. It's the only company that has done about 50 million units of its shares, accounting for way more than 60% of the entire transactions that we've seen in the market this afternoon. We know that Zenith Bank is also uh, dipping in its share price. Some 23 million units of its shares have also been traded, just as we've also found Narco A currently on the top trades chart of the market. And that's what we're seeing at this point in time. Just a few companies are experiencing gains right now. Okumu Oil is currently up some 4.9%. Uh, we've got Sambikai BTC and UBA also trying to help tick up the uh, banking subsector index in this market, which is currently at 1.5, 1% uh, uh, negative territory in this market. Chimizi. Our Continental Reinsurance released a statement um, today that it will not be delisting. How is that changing the perception in the market? I don't think anything has changed on that particular company yet. Uh, I know that, yes, they had a press conference, I think it was yesterday or thereabouts, trying to clarify the whole rumors in the, uh, in the pu uh, public space about its delisting from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, earlier, we know that uh, th there was that story out there that, yes, the company which is trying to restructure its business model is also going to be delisting just after we saw the delisting of GNI, Great Nigeria Insurance. But then this company came out yesterday and talked about the fact that what they are doing is just to restructure uh, their business model and not necessarily to delist from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. They also talked about the fact that they are uh, looking at moving some shares to CRE Investments, which is supposed to be a kind of a subsidiary. Uh, that is for them to be able to get some kind of share back uh, in that uh, in that in that particular company, and then they can now have more uh, investors coming into the firm. Uh, that's what the uh, CEO of the company talked about, but not to be delisting from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. However, nothing has really changed on the share price of the company as it is right now in the market. It's still trading at its uh, normal rates in the system. Uh, but we do hope that next week, when a lot of traders, a lot of investors would have become active in the market at large, then we will be able to see uh, their kind of uh, uh, sentiment, uh, maybe pos a form of pos positive sentiment on the company. However, with the kind of business model restructuring that they are looking at getting out, they will need the uh, in, uh, investors' uh, kind of uh, approval to be able to carry that out. And until that happens, before we now get uh, more clarity about what uh, Continental Reinsurance is trying to do. Thank you, Temple. Let's um, leave it at that for the week. Thank you. Well, in Liberia, more than 60% of the country's electricity is stolen annually via illegal connections. Liberia Electricity Corporation says about $35 million is being drained from its coffers every year and that it needs to tap every cent to rebuild the country's power sector and boost supply. The sight of a technician climbing up an electricity pole in Monrovia is not a welcome sight these days for most people living in Liberia's capital. The Liberia Electricity Corporation, LEC, says that about 60% of its annual output is being stolen. The state-owned utility has launched a widespread crackdown on homes and businesses that have illegally connected to the grid. Founded by freed American slaves, Liberia is Africa's oldest modern republic. 
The country's infrastructure and public services were destroyed during civil conflicts between 1989 to 2003. Efforts at post-war recovery have been short-circuited by falling prices of Liberia's main exports, iron ore and rubber, and an Ebola outbreak from 2014 to 2016. We're in discussions with the, uh, the Ministry of, of Justice and uh, we're hoping to get some traction on those discussions with a view to moving uh, the theft of electricity from not a misdemeanor but to uh, felony and perhaps classifying it as economic sabotage because effectively that's what's happening. But many of Monrovia's residents are charged up. They say the LSC should focus on quickly resolving problems in its supply chain rather than being in such a hurry to cut their cords. I can't sleep in darkness. The reason why people are doing this thing because LEC, they're not trying to strategize. You understand? They need to come up with strategies where the Liberian people will get covered easily. You get the money, you understand, you to pay to follow the procedure. But anytime you go there, they say there's no meter, yeah. there's no meter, there's money, no meter. meter. I got two restaurants I run here before I even got a meter, we're not easy. You understand? The reason why I bypass that same thing, I just moved in this community. Helen Pocolo, another Monrovia-based entrepreneur, urges a more inclusive approach in which communities could help the LEC stop people from stealing power. I don't have electricity. I have to rely on my generator. But then I can't afford to have all my things on it. I'm appealing to the LEC to come to our rescue. We go to their office all the time. If they would just supply us, we could then stop people from tampering with the line. But because there's no solution to give us electricity, that's why people keep doing illegal things. It is estimated that only 12% of Liberia's 4.7 million people can plug into the country's current capacity of 126 megawatts. Liberia's overall demand for electricity is expected to climb to about 300 megawatts by 2030. And finally, on the global oil market, prices steadied on Friday morning after China said it would hold talks with Washington on January 7 to 8, aimed at resolving trade disputes between the two world's biggest economies. Crude prices had previously fallen after the United States followed most other major economies into a manufacturing downturn. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude oil features were at $47.15 per barrel, since cents above their last settlement. International Brent crude futures were close to their last close at $55.93 a barrel. Both crude benchmarks were down earlier in the session on concerns that a Sino-American trade war would lead to a global economic slowdown. And with that, we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program and, of course, for the week. Thank you very much for being part of it. I'm Chimizie Obiwawu.